This is John Osteen. An international ministry of compassion. Reaching the unreached and telling the untold. Claiming the good news of Jesus Christ and his love for you. Ladies and gentlemen, from Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, here is John Osteen. Well, we welcome you to the program today. We're so glad here at Lakewood Church that you have tuned in to be with us. And you know, really, when you view us in this program, you still have time to get ready to come to church. And it's not far out here. And Lakewood is the easiest church in town to find. Could I have an amen? Amen. Just come right on out. I have people of all denominations come out here and we worship God together. You don't have to join Lakewood Church to come out here and let us be a blessing to you. Actually, you can go back to your church and be a blessing to them you can't come this morning, come tonight at 7 o'clock, and we'll teach you the Word of God. We're always glad to have them, aren't we, Dodie? Amen. You know, John, a lot of these people are suffering, not only those here in the congregation, but those who are watching television. And they have things that they're concerned about. Everybody does in this day and time. But I always think of this scripture that's helped me so much in the past. He will perfect that which concerneth thee. Now, whatever concerns you also concerns Jesus. So as you seek him and talk to him out of your heart like a little child, he'll perfect that which concerns you. I want to encourage you today that Jesus knows all about your needs, and he is concerned. Amen. And everybody said amen. Amen. Well, this is what we do here. We lift up our Bibles and make the devil mad and Jesus glad. Amen. So hold your Bible up and let's make our confession. You folks at home can do the same thing and do you good because this will lift you. Okay, wave them around. Everybody say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I will never be the same. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Here is a scripture that God strongly urged me to impress upon the television audience. I preached again and again here in this church about this subject, but I believe all of us across America need to face the issues of reality today. 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, 7. The Bible says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. I want to talk about this evil force that's in the world today. What is this evil force that comes against the human race? What is this force that causes cancer and AIDS and rheumatoid arthritis, heart trouble, all of these dreaded diseases that face humanity? What is this evil force that causes satanic worship, mass murders, all of the things that we've been reading about in the newspaper? What is this evil force that uh, causes people to hear voices and causes them to uh, uh, commit heinous crimes? You know, the courts are dumbfounded as people testify, well, I heard a voice. The voice said kill. The voice said murder. The voice said attack and rape. There is a force in the world today that is evil, that is overpowering, that is attacking the human race. Where is this force that causes abnormal living, uncleanness? What is this eruption of violence today? What is this that causes men and women to be unashamed of nudity, pornography, obscene language, even on the television? What is this? There is a force that has been unleashed in this world and we will not be uh, uh, 
profited if we hide our heads in the sand. We need to face the reality that we're in a warfare. The mystery of iniquity. What is that mystery? What is this mysterious power that is so evil that, that it wants to destroy every father's son and every mother's daughter? What is this mysterious force that wants to wreck every marriage? What is this mysterious force and where does it come from, this driving force to be abnormal in your sexual desire? What is this heinous uh, uh, force that causes men to rape their own children? What is this force that causes men to attack little boys and little girls? It's a terrible, terrible things you're talking about. I'm talking about what's going on in the world today. Thousands of people listening to me have been molested by your parents and you're ashamed and you're hurt and you're dwarfed and you're, and you're uh, crippled in life. What is this force that will cause people to do things like that? And I want you to listen. And next week, I won't, I'm going in on the television next week. I'm going to tell you how these forces take charge of people even Christian people and destroy them and bring fear and nervous breakdowns and everything. I'm going to give you the secret of how they get in and how you can stop them. If you want to hear that, shout amen. amen. But now let me show you some scriptures. The Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void. Jeremiah chapter 4 says, God created the world a fruitful place. God created the world a fruitful place. Jeremiah says in chapter 4 that it became void. It became a wilderness. In other words, between Genesis 1 and 2, something happened to ruin the fruitful place. Something happened to cause darkness to come, and the world was destroyed. What great thing came upon this earth? Well, now the Bible teaches us that that was caused by the fall of Satan. Satan was a high-ranking angel in heaven. He was called Lucifer, the son of the morning, the most beautiful creature that was in heaven, perfect in his beauty, perfect in his wisdom. The Bible talks about him falling. Bible scholars believed that that's what caused the great cataclysmic change on the earth and, and became, uh, the earth became void and became a waste place and God started over. Notice here in the book of, of Ezekiel first, verse 11, moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre and say unto him, thus saith the Lord, you seal up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You have been in Eden the garden of God. And then in verse 14, you are the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. You are upon the holy mountain of God. You have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. Look at verse 17. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom because the reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings, and they shall behold you. Verse 19. All that know that know, know thee among the people shall be astonished at you. You shall be a terror. See, the devil is, a, is the personification of terror and fear. You shall be a te terror, and never shall you be anymore. No more authority as far as God is concerned. Now notice here the rulership of Satan in Isaiah 14 and his fall. Verse 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Look up here a moment. Jesus said in the book of John when they came back and said they were rejoicing, the demons were subject unto them in his name. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. In other words, he said, I was there when he fell. I saw this bright uh, morning star, Lucifer, fall. I was there when he fell like lightning. 
In Revelation chapter 12, it talks about when, when Satan rebelled in the ancient history against God and he took a third of the angels with him and descended down to the earth. That's discussed in the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation. So we know he did fall. We know that he came down uh, in, from his pomp and ceremony. We know that he corrupted his beauty. Now we have it here. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? See, there were nations here. For you have said in your heart, I will. Everybody say, I will. I you see, he made a mistake by saying, instead of God's will, I will. I will ascend under the heaven. See, he wasn't in heaven. He's down here on earth. I will exalt my throne. Well, he had a throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? That, the, that made the world a wilderness. Everybody say that. That made the world a wilderness. Say it again. You see, God made the world a fruitful place, but when Satan fell, he made the world a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened up the houses of the prisoners. Now, this is the condition of the world. You see, Satan was cast out of heaven. Jesus called him the prince of this world. Now, Satan shows up in the Garden of Eden when God started over with Adam and Eve in the present race. And he came and tempted Adam and Eve and caused them to fall and usurp the authority there. And that made him the God of this world and the prince of this world. Now Satan, according to, to uh, Matthew chapter 12, it says the unclean spirit, when he's gone out of a man, walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. And he said, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And he comes back and finds it empty, swept and garnished. And the Bible says he went into there and took seven more spirits, more wicked than himself, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So you see, Satan has a desire. Now listen to me. This is where this involves you. Satan has no rest. Demons have no rest until they get in either man or animals. He said, I will return to, the, to my house. Did you know some dark, ugly, hairy, striped demon calls your body his house? Think about it. These demon powers in the world under the force of, of Satan roam about seeking whom they may devour, who can they, they can inhabit and influence in, uh, through their bodies. You see, that's why people hear voices. Did you know a demon will make a person exactly like they are and that person will think, well, I'm like this. No, it's not them. It's the demon in them. For instance, somebody said, great majority of people in the insane asylum, they can't find anything, you know, organically wrong with them. They've just lost their mind. And did you know thousands of them, if you get to talking with them about God, they'll scream and cry, no, no, there's no hope for me. I've committed the unpardonable sin. No hope, no hope, no hope for me, no hope. You know what that is? That's not them. That's that demon. There's no hope for that demon. And that person thinks that's them. No. You have hope. The devil has no hope. A homosexual demon will get in somebody and they, they, they'll try to make them think they're that way. A lying demon will get in somebody, they'll think, might, might make them think they're a liar. Whatever the demon is, he tries to make you take on his personality. I'll return to my house. You folks on television, you better listen to me because I'm telling you fo folks, demon powers are everywhere and people don't even realize that demon powers are working in them and through them. And, and they're out to kill every one of you, destroy your home and everything that you hold dear. They're out there. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter, chapter 2, And you hath he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and in sins, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, 
according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, the spirit, listen to me, the spirit that now works in, I in, in the children of disobedience. God Almighty is saying, when we don't serve Jesus Christ, there is a spirit in us that drives us, blinds our minds, and causes us to turn away from God. That spirit was in every one of you before you became a Christian. If you don't serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you may not recognize it, but there's a spirit working in you. And that spirit is, is driving people away from God, saying, no, look at all the hypocrites. No, I'm just as good as anybody in the church. I don't need to be saved. Everybody's going to be saved. That's a lying demon. It's a lying demon. See those demons seek entrance into your life, even as Christians. Yes, I'm going to talk about that next week. I'm going to discuss an experience I had and how I came out of it. I'll tell you, I'll show you three or four things that opened the door to the devil. And, and it will amaze you at how many people are entertaining things that give an open door to the devil. He said, the unclean spirit, when he's gone out of a man, walks through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. And he said, I will return to my house. To my house. Looks on your body and says, that's my house. Looks at your body and says, that's my house. See, if you don't know any redemptive truth, he'll just take you over and you'll never know anything about it. He'll just walk into you, think through your mind, speak through your voice. But oh, when you know redemptive reality, you got a no vacancy sign right out there. Amen. When the devil comes back your way, he sees a no vacancy sign. You're not empty. You're full of Jesus. You're full of God. You're full of the Word of God. You're full of the Holy Ghost. No vacancy. Everybody shout it. But did you know thousands of Christians don't know that? Thousands of Christians. I'm going to give you some revelation knowledge next week on television that will make your hair stand up. I know from experience. You see, the, they walk through dry places, seeking rest and finding none, and they try to dominate you and get a hold of you. Do you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the good news to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And the first sign is, in my name, they shall cast out demons. He said, I want every new believer to exercise his authority over Satan and demon powers. But unbelievers can't do that. Remember those, those, those seven sons of Sceva over there in the book of Acts? Jewish, Jewish men didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they saw Paul casting out all these demons. And they sought to do the same thing. And they got a fellow demon possessed. And, uh, and they said, we adjure thee by the, Paul that, uh, the Jesus that Paul preaches to come out of him. And the demon spoke out of that man and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? <laughs> the thing that I like about that is they know who Jesus is and they know every person that really is born again that bears his name. Say, Satan knows me. Satan knows Demons me. know me. Demons know and they know I have authority over them. Now, you see, this evil force is in the world. This, this evil force is sweeping like a tornado through the human race. You have to realize you have a deadly enemy. His ultimate desire is to destroy everything that you hold dear here and eventually drag you into hell with him. I don't know about you, but I refuse to go to hell with the devil. Good people are going to die and go to hell. Religious people are going to die and go to hell. Jesus said you must be born again. This mystery... Do you know how deceiving the devil is? This mysterious force that destroys and hurts and brings pain. The devil tells people, God did it. And people come out and say, why did God do this to me? 
Why did God allow this? Why has God done this to me? Why, people, it's not God that's doing it to you. There's another force in the world. It's the devil and demon forces. You ought to get mad at the devil and refuse to live for him. Amen. They're here. And they're going to be here until Jesus changes the course of time and this age is ended. And you need to recognize that your enemy is out there. Now let me, in the closing minutes of this telecast, let me say this. If you don't do anything about devil and demons, nobody's going to do it. You can cry until you fill a bathtub with your tears. You can have people lay hands on you until you're bald-headed. You can pray till you get calluses on your knees and the devil will laugh. No, you don't cry the devil out. You don't pray the devil out. You cast him out. Yeah. You know, I've seen the devil. De demons do get in people. I remind the congregation here. Uh, of, this, of this person that I saw, this woman, this man and woman was having trouble. And, uh, and I was there talking to them. This woman was looking at me and uh, just annoyed. And while she looked at me, suddenly her eyes became transfixed, just suddenly, just about five seconds, you know. And then I saw with my own eyes another pair of eyes come over hers. I saw the most evil, hateful look that you could ever imagine looking out that demon came up in her eyes and looked out at me and glared at me as though he were saying i hate you i hate you i hate you and then they just passed over her eyes she became perfectly normal that was a demon on the inside of her i've seen that again and again and again you see when you come against that demon in the name of jesus he has to come out there's only one name that can get him out it's not the name Baptist or Methodist or Pentecostal or Charismatic. It's the name of Jesus. I remember I was taken down the street here a few years ago. Well, many years ago now. This mother said, come into my home and talk to my daughter. She's about 25 years old. I didn't prepare myself to go in there. I just thought it was just a social visit, maybe pray for her because she was a little sick. I didn't realize she was possessed of the devil. And I walked in there, and the mother said, she's still in bed. I said, will you go in the bedroom with me? So we went in the bedroom. She called her name and said, Brother Osteen's here to see you. Well, she was flat on her stomach. So her mother just walked out knowing that she'd just turn over and, and you know, keep covered up and look at me, you know, and, and I could minister to her. Here I was just innocent, not prepared. And directly she began to wiggle like this. And directly she just uncoiled like this. And I tell you, I was looking straight in the eyes of the devil. He had totally possessed that woman. And I mean, I felt such an evil power. Listen, folks, your power is no power for the devil. I'm not bragging on him. I'm just giving you facts. You need the name of Jesus Christ. And, and, and she, she, those eyes just came out. I'm telling, telling you a spiritual force of evil that pinned me to the wall, and I could hardly breathe. Puh, puh, they tried to press the life out of me, and, and I couldn't, and then suddenly I couldn't think. I'm not bragging on the devil. I'm telling you the truth. And I, I, I almost panicked. But thank God down in my spirit, I could pray in tongues. I start praying in tongues right there. And I tell you that those tongues just rose up over my voice and broke the power of the devil. And I leaped over there and I said, come out, come out in Jesus' name. And she became perfectly normal. I want you to know that God can give you deliverance, but you've got to recognize your enemy. We had a woman stand right here, so demon-possessed, she didn't even know where she was. And when Dodie cast the demon out of that woman, she fell flat on her face and was healed. You saw that, didn't you? Y'all, if you remember that, say amen. amen. Yes, and, and demon powers lurk in people, and, and they influence people, and they speak through people, and they want to destroy people. But I want to tell you folks, 
That's what Lakewood Church is all about. We're not trying to get some people to join this church. We just want to help suffering, sighing, crying, dying humanity. We want to give them redemptive revelation of what God has done through the Lord Jesus Christ, how they can be free. You don't have to have me to help you. You don't have to have somebody else to help you. You just need the name of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you can break the power of the devil over your grandchild, over your child, over your family, and you can find victory in Jesus' name. I challenge you to do it. Hallelujah.